So in terms of a brief uh, overview, in terms of trip channels and bladder sensations, again, no conflicts for this presentation. So we know in terms of the trip channel superfamily, uh, vertebrate trip channels represent a family consisting of more than 30 subtypes. Uh, and obviously, most of these we know very little about in terms of bladder sensation. Now, most of these channels are clearly involved in a number of functions, anything from exocytosis to apoptosis, muscle contraction, and certainly activation of sensory neurons. So in this schematic, this is really meant to illustrate the idea that natural plant products have really, over the years, provided a number of powerful probes in order to identify all of these channels and studying molecules underlying sensation, what actually activates them. So you see actually a, a handful of these natural products. We're familiar with some of them from camphor to chili to garlic, horseradish, cinnamon, which can activate these channels. And because these are thermo uh, trip channels, you can see below, um, this is the degree to which changes in temperature can activate. So obviously the cold channels are considered trip A1 and trip M8, and then all the way up to trip V1 and trip V2, which are activated by higher temperatures. Now all of these channels are clearly involved in a large number of bladder disorders. Anything from overactive to underactive bladder, idiopathic overactive bladder, neurogenic, clearly uh, various types of bladder pain, chronic bladder pain, um, and there's a lot of interaction between these channels, a lot of overlap in terms of what activates them, what type of dysfunction, uh, and what can actually modulate or block these channels. So to start with the trip V family, uh, clearly there are a number of others that we'd know a, a little about, very little about in terms of bladder function. Trip V1, trip V1 is clearly one of the oldest or the best char characterized, I should say. In terms of activators, anything from fatty acids to clearly vanilloids, capsaicin, RTX, endocannabinoids, and so forth, trip V2 is activated at much higher temperatures, mechanical stimuli, and trip V4 is really considered more of a mechanosensor, activated by changes in mechanical stretch, tension, hypotonicity, shear stress, and even four ball esters. Now, in terms of the distribution, it looks pretty much the same. Your thelium, bladder nerves, and muscle. But there is a lot of uh, disparity between them, even in terms of the subtypes of afferents that may be more active. Um, and trip V4s we'll talk about just a little bit later in terms of um, activated more in terms of expression in the urothelium. The function ranges from mechanosensation, to chemosensation, thermosensation, um, and the pathophysiology, again, a large range, anything from bladder pain to overactive and clearly underactive bladder as well. So trip B1 is clearly the founding member of a family of thermotrips. This channel contains domains that confer sensitivity to various stimuli, including capsaicin, RTX, protons, and even peptide toxins from the tarantula. Now, this channel can certainly be directly activated by a number of factors. We talked about a few, such as capsaicin, vanilloids, even alcohol, uh, anandamide, and, and a number of other inflammatory uh, mediators. It can also be sensitized indirectly by a number of factors, including nerve growth factor, uh, prostaglandins, and also even uh, hormones. In addition, when you sensitize this particular uh, channel, this involves recruitment of intracellular uh, trip receptors from the cytosol to the membrane. And a little more is known about this in terms of activation by nerve growth factor. So nerve growth factor, NGF, can increase the excitability of bladder nerves, but also epithelial cells as well by altering both the expression and the sensitivity of trip V1. So literally, this actually pushes trip V1 to the membrane, and it does so by, via a PKC-dependent mechanism. We've done studies over the years, and others have done this as well. We did a study with Toby Chai with uh, urothelial cells isolated from uh, patients diagnosed with idiopathic overactivity. 
And these particular uh, urothelial cells exhibited an increased expression level of TRPV1 only at the membrane, and they also exhibited an increased sensitivity to capsaicin. And Toby and others have also done this in terms of patch clamp, uh, intracellular calcium, as well as transmitter release, showing the same thing. So the net result is that there is an increased sensitivity uh, to mechanical and chemical stimuli. And when this happens, this can certainly in adversely impact bladder function to change sensory urgency, overactivity, and even bladder pain. There are a number of agents that can activate TRIP channels. So in this particular figure, this is really focusing on TRIP A1 and TRIP V1. We know that uh, tissue injury or uh, stress in general can, can generate a number of pro-algesic, uh, pro-pain or inflammatory mediators, and a lot of this is just called collectively an inflammatory soup. And so NGF, obviously a change in pH, when this drops, bradykinin, a number of the other factors can certainly activate these channels, but it can also uh, induce oxidative stress. So by uh, increasing oxidation, lipid peroxides, um, this generates something called nitro fatty acids. And this in itself can activate TRIP channels, both TRIP V1 and TRIP A1. And this leads to an increase in bladder activity. And there's a lot of interest now in nitro fatty acids in terms of bladder pain and overactivity. So, in, a, so in, in general, TRIP A1 and TRIP V1 basically function as polymodal signal integrators. These channels can detect a whole diverse range of cellular products that are produced during inflammation, oxidative stress, injury, and this uh, leads to basically a cellular overload. It increases cellular dysfunction, increases cellular calcium, and the net result, depending on the tissue, you can have uh, burning, stinging pain, itching sensations, and certainly overactivity and alterations in, in sensory function. TRIP V4 uh, is of interest. It's generated a lot more interest over the years with the use of knockout animals. And so TRIP V1 is found actually in bladder nerves, but it's highly expressed in the urothelium. And that's not just in the bladder, but in most tissues and epithelial cells. Though most studies in showing it in mouse have shown it mainly in the basal layers, it is species dependent, so it seems to be found all through the bladder, I mean all through the bladder urothelium. And it functions mainly as a mechanosensor, so it acts a little bit different than TRIP-A1, TRIP-M8, and TRIP-V1. And so really when these cells are activated, they can release a number of factors, these urothelial cells that communicate with underlying nerves. And so, in general, over the years, antagonists to TRIP B4 um, are thought to be very useful in preclinical studies, may represent a therapy for treatment for storage disorders. The antagonists actually have shown some efficacy in terms of bladder contractility, uh, and so thought to be perhaps towards um, uh, the underactive bladder. But there's so many side effects that this has effectively been, been dropped. And so there are a potential number of targets for DO treatment and other treatment as well and the stage of development. Again, there's a little more history in terms of TRIP V1. And so you can see a number of agonists, capsaicin, RTX, at various stage of development, randomized clinical trials over the years. There are a huge number of antagonists. A lot of these have had some issues in terms of thermosensation, uh, which is a side effect that have been dropped, but a number of these still show a lot of promise. And there's also uh, TRIP-V1 permeable sodium channel blockers that are now in preclinical trials as well. In terms of the other TRIP channels, uh, again, these are a little less known about them, but TRIP-V4, not the agonists because of the side effects, but the antagonists are in preclinical and even phase one study. Um, and TRIP M8 and TRIP A1, again, both the antagonists, preclinical study as, as well as phase one trial for the TRIP A1. So all of these are thought to be extremely promising. Uh, and in conclusion, then TRIP channels, again, may be linked with distinct subpopulations of sensory afferents. And we're learning a little more about this over time. Uh, they clearly play a role in bladder physiology and play a role in pathology as well. Activation of these channels clearly releases a number of mediators, uh, including those uh, that are expressed in the urothelium. 
modulators to all of these channels. Again, we know a little bit less about trip V2. There's also some interest in trip V3. These are clearly prominent, uh, prominent targets for bladder pathology. However, the ubiquitous presence of these channels uh, in so many different combinations in different organs is really a challenge to effectively target these channels uh, for the treatment of various bladder pathologies without unprecedented side effects. So I'll, I'll stop there and then introduce our next speaker.